What is going on wonderful people? I hope you're having a phenomenal day so far. Like the title of the video suggests, we're gonna be diving into the best 35 millimeter film camera of all time, the Nikon F3. So the Nikon F3 released around 1980. This thing has been around for 30 plus years now. And this was Nikon's Pro SLR uh, grade flagship camera. And I can see why, because the images even in 2023 that I've captured using this old school camera have been phenomenal and some of the best film photos that I've ever taken in my life. For those of you that follow the channel, you know a few months ago I went ahead and posted a video about my one year film photography journey that more so highlights a lot of the things I did with my Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2, my medium format film camera. Uh, this bad boy came uh, a little bit afterwards, probably Probably, uh, to be exact, about three or four months after the fact. Uh, and I have no idea, honestly, why I wanted to purchase a Nikon F3, but I knew I wanted a 35 millimeter film camera. And after doing some research, uh, watching a lot of videos, and just figuring out what's best for me, this little thing right here really, really took me by surprise. Um, just how great this device is. So I went ahead and purchased it off of KH. And from that point on, I've been using this bad boy here, shooting on a 35 millimeter film camera like the Nikon F3 has been super easy and helpful for me especially um, getting into the film world because this has an internal light meter that I use um, to the T so I literally can just hold this up to my subject here and it'll go ahead and let me know the type of light metering that I need and then using my knowledge from my digital camera days I can go ahead and just kind of get the best shot with my Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 I basically either use a other digital camera to light meter or I'll basically use some of my just again knowledge from previous digital photography and I kind of know where like light falls off and how it affects um, a subject when you're shooting outdoors so um, you know it's a tad bit of both but using the Nikon F3 it makes it a lot easier it'll tell me if my image is properly exposed or not uh, and then I just go from there so I haven't missed yet with this camera. This thing does take those weird little circle CMOS batteries at the uh, bottom right here. It does take those CMOS batteries, the same ones that you put in like your garage um, door opener. And you know, it's nothing wrong with it. You just go online and find a couple of those and pop them in here. I believe it takes two, uh, but these things last forever. I have not had to change the batteries within this thing. And I've traveled a lot with it over this past year and used it quite a bit of time. So um, not jinxing it right now, because right after I say this, I'll have to change a new pair into this, but I have not had to switch batteries yet. They are very reliable and last pretty long. I believe I have the Duracell brand. I'll leave a uh, link to that in the description below. Unlike some of my other full frame kits from in the past, I don't have a crap ton of lenses that I accompany the Nikon F3 with because I am very realistic in terms of the type of gear that I use now, especially when traveling around a little bit. I do not want to travel with 50 different lenses. So I do actually own three lenses, just three lenses, I know. The first one is gonna be the 28 millimeter F2 lens. I use that for a lot of my wide angle shots. I have shot a couple portraits um, using this lens, but I often use that if I want to capture a lot of scenery. It is a landscape lens. It reminds me a lot of a 24 and a 35, basically the little sweet spot in between of the 28. If I want to hold it out to try to get a selfie of myself too, it even works. Uh, but I use that for a lot of my landscape photography, especially when I'm out in really beautiful scenic areas. The next one, and that doesn't honestly leave my Nikon F3, is going to be this 50 millimeter f1.4 lens i did at one point in time own an f1.850 uh, but i ended up uh, selling that one and now i just have the 1.4 just because i needed that extra stop of light just in case i'm shooting at night somewhere um and need to just you know add more light to my image but this 50 has been my favorite honestly for film photography um and i don't know if i mentioned this on video before i was in love with the 85 millimeter focal length when shooting full frame uh, but now since switching to film, 50 just seems a lot better for me. I don't know why that's the case. 
uh, but I do love shooting with the 50 on the Nikon F3. And last but not least here, I got the 105 F2.5 lens. And this bad boy is like ridiculous just in terms of image quality that you actually get from using this. I absolutely adore this lens. I knew because I wasn't a fan of 85 that I needed to go a little bit higher, especially for different portraits that I uh, like to take of folks. And the 100 millimeter focal length is perfect for me. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tough to use this in some low light situations just because it's an F2.5, but at least with the Nikon F3, if I need to do anything crazy, I can put this on a tripod, have a shutter release camera, Cable, and then I could turn my shutter speed pretty low because it's not handheld and then end up taking the shot anyway. So either or uh, this combo here, the 105 and the Nikon F3, beautiful, beautiful combo like of the images you're seeing on the screen. Honestly, I don't know which one I had more trouble with focusing at first. Was it, was it the Mamiya RZ67 or was it my Nikon F3? I want to say the Nikon F3 because it, that was just a new concept for me, especially being new to film and manual focusing. I was just used to holding the Mamiya. You know, it has that waist level viewfinder. So you're looking down, trying to um, look into the camera here to take the shot. But this F3, I don't know what it was, man. The Honestly though, the, the focus ring on the 51.4 is a lot better than it was on the 50. Um, 1.8 that I had. The 1.8, it felt a little loose, and at times I'd have have a habit of holding my hand on the focus ring after it's actually adjusted and taking the shot, uh, but in reality, I probably shouldn't have been doing that. Uh, but focusing on this was a little bit hard at first, but I am proud to say that I don't miss many shots with manual focus now. And the cool part about film is, even the shots that aren't in focus still look pretty cool. Um, and that's one of the whole concepts I love about this camera or film in general is that there's not like really a wrong way to do things. Take that back. If you underexpose your color film, that's always not going to look so hot. But outside of that, everything else is pretty much subjective and uh, up to the creator's discretion. I really love that about this. Even though I recently bought a Nikon F5 and the autofocus on that thing is ridiculous for a camera that came out in the 90s, this is still my go-to. The Nikon F3 is still my go-to camera. I use it for a lot of my 35 millimeter shoots, especially when I just want that film experience. The F5 is phenomenal, do not get me wrong, but um, it has autofocus and it reminds me a little bit too much of modern day cameras, uh, even though it was made in the 90s. My thing is I, I want that slow manual focus where I take my time and I snap once and I gotta manually crank it <laughs> to go to the next image. Um, that's what I want in my life. And I need that sometimes in order to stay sane in the field and again, to keep me engaged within the art itself so the Nikon F3 ain't going nowhere by far one of the most used cameras in my kit today and it will continuously be used in my kit over and over again as always guys thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments what you think of this beautiful Nikon F3 or if you have any other film cameras that you like to use on a day-to-day -day basis um, yeah I'm excited about this and getting some more images with this awesome camera and yeah I ain't got nothing else y'all so I will catch y'all in the next video Peace.